My recent conversation with Bill Strong was a goldmine of wisdom from a true value investor. The excerpt you're about to see somehow didn't make it into the final broadcast, but it was just too good to leave on the cutting room floor. Don't miss the full conversation with Bill Strong, only on Real Vision. Do you feel that, because I, you know, I've long believed that the point in the cycle where you enter this industry will, will shape your career, will shape mm-hmm. your way of thinking. You, know, so you, you came into the industry at the worst time for the industry, perhaps, but to my mind, arguably the best time to come in to, to learn to, to be to an learn. investor. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, did, did you feel that at the time? or? Um. Well, we, we knew that this wasn't going to last, and we also, therefore, the valuations we saw, we knew this was a good opportunity to get in. Um, and so in that sense, um, it wasn't a bad time because I didn't really suffer. I mean, the bond, the bond experience was moderately painful, but the, but the stock experience wasn't, wasn't bad. I'll give you an example of, of one of the things that we, that we were able to do in that period of time. Um, going, going back to business school, and this, this kind of ties into the to the other, the, 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 um, the other things that I'm, I want to touch on today. Um, going back to business school, we had a case uh, in my last semester there on um, the public offering of Dreyfus Corporation. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know, did you know Dreyfus was a mutual fund yep. management company? Okay. So Dreyfus, um, Jack Dreyfus had started the company in the early 60s uh, and had had uh, some success in marketing it and, and, and raising, raising money to put in his mutual fund and the company had grown. And as you may know, the investment management business is maybe the very best business anytime because there's no, there's no capital. Uh, the returns on capital are, are huge. It's one reason that I like to be in this business. Yeah. Uh, and, and so uh, this was a great business in and of itself. But Jack Dreyfus had also had the good sense um, to own... Um, a business that, that I, don't, I don't know the process by which he came up, but there was a business of, of duplicating uh, paper copies of things, holographic, I don't know the exact science. It was a little company called Xerox, and he bought it in 1962 or something. So he had this mutual fund that had Xerox in it, and it was doing really well. Right. Plus, he was one of the first people that started advertising. Uh, and so this business did extremely well. I don't remember the numbers, but it just the earnings just exploded money, way guess. up. Yeah. So by 1967, we were in this speculative phase in the last phase of the bull market. So Jack Dreyfus had the good sense to sell his company. He sold, he sold the whole thing, took it public, took his check, and went to the beach. Now, this is a case we had in, the business, in business school. And I came away from that case with the idea that one of the things that really can give you ex- really good returns is, I don't know, alignment or layering or whatever to call it, that when you have compounding good things happening with your business mm-hmm. and get a valuation on, or increase on top of all that. So this is one of the things we kind of look for, to see if we can get several positive trends together uh, and, and then exploit the valuation uh, anomalies in the market. So um, this was a case, and, I, and it, it made a real impression on me because this had been such a success. And I also was interested in the industry and the business. So fast forward to 1979, I'm sitting at a breakfast table one day looking in the newspaper, and I read an advertisement for a new product from Dreyfus Corporation, and it was a mutual fund of money market instruments. Okay, well, I didn't even know you could do that, but you, you know, they had CD, banker CDs right. and treasury bills and bankers' acceptance. So um, I'm looking at this thing, and, and you know, the yield is 20%. This is a mutual fund that's giving you a, a, a guaranteed 20% a year. Wow, that's pretty good. So I start doing some work on it. And sure enough, they just invented this product not too long ago. And it's taking off for obvious reasons. Yeah. People had their money in a savings account or whatever. This was a way they could put their money to work at 20% with no risk. Yeah. So this product was just booming. Plus, on top of that, uh, this product, uh, even if you had, didn't get new money in, it was compounding at 20% yes. all by itself. So it was, sorry, reasonably small to, to start with in, in Dreyfus. Um, but it was, it was growing like crazy. So Dreyfus's earnings were growing like crazy. And the stock hadn't done anything. Yeah. Everybody thought of it as an uh, equity mutual fund, and that was in the dumper. So this was a business that was inside of that and growing. So 
you could easily project that Dreyfus's earnings were going to grow at 15, 20 percent for the next few years. The stock was at five times earnings. Yeah. It was like, this is amazing. This is a great business in the worst of times. Yep. This was a, in the very worst of times for financial assets. So I remember I, I, I went in and, and uh, pitched it to Ruane. Uh, I think it was too small. Um, yep. but, but anyway, he, he, he didn't buy it. And, uh, but I thought this was really great. I, five times earnings, this was great. So I bought some from my father. Um, and that's the only, only money that I ran, had anything to say over. So I, <laughs> I bought him some stock, uh, and in the next year or so, the stock doubled. Wow, this is fantastic. What a genius. <laughs> so my father said, gee, well, that's terrific. So the stock doubled, and that's fine. So I sold it. Four years later, they got taken over at five times what I sold it for. Yeah. But the, the, among many messages in this is the idea that um, even in the worst of times, you can as make value. good money yep. as a value investor yep. um, by buying things that are, that are good businesses at low valuations. In this case, I happen to get the earnings the, the tailwind from the high interest rates. Yep. But the idea that you don't want to own stocks in the bear market, I don't think is necessarily true. You, you, you know, in general, that's true. But there are things to be done, and this goes to the point I want to make about we find that being very selective uh, in picking specific stocks uh, is, is a way to make extra returns that's worked really well for us over a long period of time. Well, and, the, and the beauty, you know, that, that, that strategy is so out of fashion now. Nobody yeah, wants exactly. to do research, nobody wants to do any work at all, really, because there's an easy way of getting rich, and that's through index, because the index keeps going up. You know, the, the other thing about that, um, the, what Jack Dreyfus did, which I find interesting, is there was a point where he went 100% cash. Yeah. At anyway, just the right time. At just the right time. That was that was a really interesting decision. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I never knew him. I never knew why. But sure. He didn't sell ten percent of it. He sold no. all of it. No. And, and he and he and he took the cash. And, yeah. he, and he and he said, "I'm stepping out." And that you know that that idea to me, I find very interesting because it, there are times when that's a really sensible thing to do. And yet, you know, since then, and I don't know if that seemed unusual, or seemed strange, or seemed daring at the time. I don't know. But today, that would seem to, to not be invested yeah. for a guy. You know, I look at Sam Zell, who's one of my yeah, heroes. Yeah. You know, there's a guy who, I mean, you know, his record of calling turning points is extraordinary. And whenever I see him on the news talking about, you know, I'm, I'm selling my property, I'm selling business, I'm selling this, my ears go straight up in the air. And he's back doing that now. Yeah. He's talking about how no one's showing up to, when they're trying to sell properties. Did, did that feel like an unusual thing for someone to do back then, or, or did it not? Well, I don't know. I was still in high school. This is the case, the <laughs> right. case that I read was the one that back in the 60s. So yeah. I read it in the 70s, and then I found it in the... In the right, but, but when, you, when you're but, reading it in that environment, did, did you think... Yeah, I wondered the same thing, because it must have been difficult, because everybody, that was the time when everybody was bullish, and the stock yeah. prices only went up, and you had this, you know, it's nothing like we've had in the last 10 years, but it was certainly a, a very optimistic period. And we, we've talked a little bit about this with... Um, 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 Adam Smith's book about yes. and talking to, to, to Ned Johnson at, at Fidelity. That, at that period of time, people were very optimistic and very bullish. And, and so for him to have done that, I think, does show he's very different than, than the industry that he's in, part, yeah. part of. Yeah.